Uh, we're going to talk about sending emails directly from Power Apps. Um, probably slightly a bit sort of dumbed down from Paul's excellent demo, but um, hope for some cool tips to kind of um, work around on this one. Quick intro to me. I'm Craig. I'm from the UK. I work for a Microsoft partner over here called ANS. Uh, I've been a Microsoft MVP now since January, so uh, quite a while, I guess. And I mostly blog at platformsofpower.net. Um, when I'm not doing stuff in the community or working, uh, I'm generally just hanging out with my family or building Lego. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much me. The agenda for today um, is largely influenced by a conversation I had with, with a few friends uh, not so long back that they built a lot of flows sending emails in, in, in Power Automate, but have never done it in Power Apps or tried, but failed for some of the connectivity or some of the settings. So I thought well, that's a good excuse for a bit of content. So we're going to take the Office 365 Outlook connector and the send email v2 action that we can see on the left. And we're going to go through all the mandatory and optional properties, um, but in PowerFX, how to do it all in PowerFX. I'm running this today for an admin account. You don't need admin access to send emails from PowerApps, but I need to show you a little bit of purview and a Microsoft 365 admin for some of the settings. Um, so it's just easy to just kind of use one, one account. Right, so I'm going to dive in really, really simple and then kind of layer it up as we go. So the bare essentials we need to send an email from PowerApps for PowerFX is who we're sending it to, an email address, the subject title, and the body, in that order. So very, very simple to absolutely get started right away. It's hard code. Lovely job. Here's my email, subject title, and body. What if we wanted to send multiple emails from PowerFX? Well, again, we can list out the individual email addresses. So long as we put a semicolon in um, after each email address, again, it will send that email to multiple people. So that's fine. Really easy to get started. You just need the connector, the V2 action, and then those properties in that order. Those are the three mandatory fields that you need to get started. Or what if we kind of want to level it up a little bit? Um, let's say we want our users to build an email in the app to then send. Maybe we don't want to use hard code emails. Maybe it might be different depending on the scenario. So there's a couple of little bits we can do with that. Um, there's lots of different ways you can get dynamic email addresses into an app. It could be with filters or lookups to lists or collections. I'm going to just opt for a combo box here. And in the combo box, I set the items property to the Office 365 users connector um, and just doing a bit of a lookup. So I want to find users in my directory. So I need to look for me and I need to look for the account that I'm running this in. So there we go. We've got our users, but they are the names of the users, not the email addresses. So what can we do there? We can see the first line of our syntax. We're going to go and do a concat function. So we're going to take the combo box. We are going to take the selected items from that combo box. It's the two people we selected, find their email address, and then add a semicolon onto the end of each one. As per the previous example, we need that if we've got multiple addresses. We can also use a rich text box, uh, sorry, a text input box for the subject title, which is what we've got here, and a rich text box for the body. Now, you can use a text input control for the body and you can set the text property to multiple. And it looks nice in the app when you type in, it's got spaces. But when you send it, um, it comes out all flat and a bit rubbish in, in the Outlook side. So rich text editor control is the way forward. If you want people to type with a nice bit of formatting, line spaces, everything else. And we want to point to the HTML text property of that specific, um, that specific control. So if you run that, hopefully, we get a nice email up here, happy days. Say, look, there's the people that we've chosen. Here's our, our nice email body, all the formatting in place, happy days. What if we want to go a step further and say, well, actually, what if we can construct an email without the user having to put any information in? Maybe we can kind of configure some stuff to run during an on select or an on success. Uh, so what I've done here for the body is just kind of join together a little bit of HTML. Very, very basic. I'm not the best HTML person in the world, so don't ask me any additional questions, but it's a very, very simple structure of taking some HTML, but concatenating some dynamic information from our app. So we can see txt subject.txt. That's our bit of text up here. And basically, I want that in an email body. I want to make it bold, which is why we've got the strong tags. I want to color it green. And I want to sign off this email nice and professionally by saying thanks or regards a line break, and then get the name of the logged on user, because that's how we typically uh, sign off an email. So let's see what that looks like. Hope that comes across nicely. There we go. 
So again, here we go. Again, it's picked up the dynamic references. It's taken that content and formatted it as expected. And it's dynamically picked up the logged on user to sign that email off in a professional way. Happy days. And that's kind of like the main bits your two, your subject title and your body. And there's loads more you can do with that in injecting tables or other ways you can kind of get the user information. Uh, but those are the three essential bits you need to get started. We're now going to dive into some of the sort of optional properties, if you like. Um, I'm going to start with CC and BCC. I think we've all been around long enough using emails to know how these work. So I'm not going to kind of demo this one, but you can use one or both properties if you need to CC any additional email addresses in. And again, these could be hard coded or taken from other sources, but the options are there if you want to use them. You just need to start uh, with some additional curly brackets and then pick one of the selected properties. Start typing in CC or BCC, and then it will give the option to start configuring. We can do importance as well. So you might see emails come across of high or low importance. Normally in Outlook, we can do the same thing in the Power Platform as well. Um, you can opt to have importance of normal, but that's the default of an email in any kind of email client, really. So you only really need this additional part of the syntax if you want to overstate or understate an email. So importance equals high or importance equals low. And again, that will come over as expected, either for low with the downwards blue arrow, or we've got the red exclamation mark if it's going to be high importance. Very, very simple to set up, very, very easy to use. The next one, just to touch on, will be the reply to property. So typically when we get an email from someone, when we click the reply button, it's going to draw, start draft a reply to whoever sent us that email. But maybe we want to funnel replies to these comms from the app into a central mailbox, for example. So we could potentially look to hard code or dynamically get in another email address into, into this particular property. So if people do reply to the comms, it's going to that central mailbox. It's important to note at this stage that you do not need any special permissions to the mailbox you're specifying in reply to. You can put any old email address on your domain or even in a different domain if you really, really want to. Now I state the permission side of things because for the next property is the from property where we do need some additional configuration and we walk through that in a second so if i want to send an email on behalf of or as another account i need permissions in microsoft 365 admin to actually do that if i haven't got those permissions i will get an email uh, an error when i'm trying to send an email from another account where I haven't got access. It says I'm not authorized to send emails on behalf of that account. OK, so how do I get access? Well, if you've got access to Microsoft 365 Admin, um, you can do it yourself. If not, you might have to speak to the person who does. But essentially, in M365 Admin, we can go to Users, Active Users, find the account we want to send emails as or on behalf of, click on the Mail property, and we've got these options here, Send As Permissions or On Behalf Of. And we can add the individual users in there to give permissions to send on behalf or as these other accounts. You can do the same thing with shared mailboxes. That's also in here. Teams and groups, shared mailboxes, same process. Um, so let's have a look at how that works. So we can see from our mailbox and demos at the moment, we've got emails from Ecosystem Admin, which is my current account. But actually, we're now sending this as another account and we can see the no reply. So we know that that's worked and we've got permissions. So that's that one. Happy days. Um, attachments. This is, I don't know if it's a little bit hacky and if there's a better way, someone please do shout in the chat. Um, but essentially, to get the attachments control, I've added a Dataverse table. You can also add a SharePoint list. That's not a problem. Um, added a form control. Clean everything out apart from the attachments just so I can attach a couple of files and then use this syntax you can see on screen to send an email with attachments. So if I go and attach a couple of files and I've got some images of these two handsome young rogues here, um, let's add them in. And as part of the code here, we're going to go for every attachment in the attachments control, get the content, get the file name and attach them to the email I'm just about to send. Hopefully that will come over. There we go. Send email of attachments and we've got those two images attached. Happy days. The final setting to go over is sensitivity. So if you have started, you may have started running organizations or you may be about to start to look at sensitivity labels across your wider Microsoft 365 ecosystem. These can be applied to documents, emails. These can determine all sorts of different rules, whether you can forward, whether you can download, all sorts of different stuff. And I think people are starting to get into these a little bit more to start securing their data in terms of co-pilot usage behind the scenes. We can apply a sensitivity label to our emails and power apps as well. But we've got this weird little ID on screen. And what the hell is that? And how do we get it? 
Um, well, this requires a bit of access to purview. So if we go into purview and we look at information protection and then sensitivity labels and select the relevant label we need, you can see we've got the ID here. This is the bit of text we need to copy and stick into our code in between speech marks to be able to send with the sensitivity label. If you don't have access to Purview, then the irony, go into Power Automate and set up the email action and add the advanced parameter for sensitivity and you will see a list, sorry, a nice friendly list of all of your relevant sensitivity labels that you can pick from. When you save the flow, it will actually convert it to the underlying ID, which again, is what we need for our syntax. If for whatever reason that doesn't work, then you can run the flow as a test and in the inputs you have email message sensitivity. And again, you've got the relevant ID of the sensitivity label there, which you can then plug into your PowerFX. So again, if we click on that, you'll notice from the previous examples here, we haven't got any sensitivity labeling going on. The one that we are using, we're using highly confidential all employees, and that particular sensitivity label also has a mandatory footer applied. So again, if we use the right ID, we'll get the right properties that are configured in that sensitivity label. And it will come out through the through the through the outputs. And that's it. Um, that's going for all the properties. Very, very simple. And yes, you can absolutely combine any or all of these together in terms of dynamic bodies with information, attachments, BCC, CC, reply to's, anything that kind of suits for your particular requirements. Um, and hopefully we'll get a nice email just at the end to sort of showcase everything. So yeah, we've got from a different address, we've got a sensitivity label, we've got our attachments. We've got a nicely formatted body. We've got dynamic information. So yeah, you can kind of munge all these together um, to work out which ones you do or don't need uh, based on those requirements. Very, very simple stuff, but hopefully very, very effective. And even some of that sensitivity trick or the reply to trick um, could be potentially even be useful from, from a power to make perspective as well. Um, so yeah, that's me. Very simple stuff. If you want to connect, feel free to. And um, yeah, I've gone pretty quick in some of, the, some of this stuff. If you want to digest it in your own time, feel free to head over to my blog, find that article, and you've got a whole bunch of scenarios and bits of code to nick. And that's it. Thank you very much.